What's up? Okay. Welcome to Seth's Guide to Bikes. Yeah, that was a part from Heartbroken Maya. The thing I wrote, kinda. That's the vibes part. I made the vibes part. Yeah, so uh, go me. Yeah, so today we're gonna talk about vibes. So, I'm sorry about... That. I tried the best I can. So, today we're gonna go over, like, what is this I have? Today we're gonna go over what's a vibraphone. What does the vibraphone bring to the ensemble? How important do I think the vibes are in the pit? Things you should expect from the vibraphone part. And finally, the cool thing about vibes, which I'm so happy to do. I, okay, I spent I spent an hour and a half working on this thing. I'll get to that later, but it's currently 7.40 at school. I need to get home. Thankfully, I don't have any homework, but I... But we're also gonna go, um, I think, I mean, if I have time, I'll try to sound test every night. I mean, yeah, if I put this in the video, yeah, I'm gonna do it. What is the vibraphone? It actually has like three names. It has the vibraphone, vibra harp, and vibes. Yeah, vibra harp, who would have known, right? I think the vibra harp is actually something else, but it turned into this, and some people still use the name. It has a pedal, right? So, yeah, you know, if I hit it, no pedal, pedal. Cool. There's a lot more actually that's cool about the vibes, I'll go back, I'll get to that later. But the main thing is like it has a pedal, and it's metal um, bars. The bars are actually made mostly of aluminum, which I found surprising. I, I didn't even think about it. Either. This is most well known for jazz on the back. Another thing that's different, um, the accidental keys, like the black keys on the piano, are not sacked like this. They're like this. It's just different. I think that the vibes are very versatile. Like, very versatile. They have many qualities about them that makes it like insanely versatile. Okay, what do I think the vibraphone brings to the ensemble? Well, I mean, like, I mean, I'd actually eventually say this with like, every instrument, but like, it just brings its own sound. I've recently thought about how the pit is kind of just like the percussion section of marching band. Because, okay, so for percussion sections in like normal band, the concert band, wind ensemble, symphonic band, right? The percussion section adds like effects, right? Like I talked about, it's like, like it's the sprinkles, right? That's what I referred to it to pit ads in my pit video, right? So, thing is, battery is percussion, but I feel like the two, like, they're too involved with the rest of the band to, like, say there's special effects. Like, there's stuff all about the battery. It's so heavily focused on battery. So, it's not like there's special effects. Pit is a special effect. We can do whatever the hell we want. We have, like, a lot of different, like, mountain instruments, right? We can bring, like, a lot of different cymbals, gongs, like drum sets, whatever. We can do a lot, we're the special effects, right? So in that way, a special effect would be the vibes. A special effect would be the marimba. A special effect would be the glockenspiel, spiel, so on and so forth. So I think I'm gonna just say for every single one of these videos, what does the vibes bring to the ensemble? It brings the vibe sound, yeah. But the thing is, like the vibe sound is so, like, I don't think you can go a show without <coughs> <coughs> coughing. I don't think you can go on a show without the vibes. Same goes for marimba. This is kind of like a staple of the pit, right? So you're not gonna take out the vibes. And of course, like like I said, it's a versatile instrument. I don't think that marching band takes advantage of vibes that much, or at least not that I've seen. High level like drum floors might, because like, come on, why wouldn't you? And they're taking advantage of everything you can, right? But like high school level, I'm not sure if you take advantage of the main versatility of the instrument. Versatility, okay. How important do I think the vibes are in the pit? So, I think that they're pretty important. Like, you know, they're like staple number two, or whatever, right? Um, but like, just the idea that they like, give like sustained notes and just the vibe sound is so like integral in the pit. Yeah, like in the script, I said it's like, kind of like the second voice of the marimba, right? Like, you have the marimba sound, and like, second to that is the vibe sound. That's basically just me restating, like, yeah, it's a staple in the pit. Which percussion right now, our show, part two, it goes from marimba to vibes kind of thing. And like then like I like measure whatever, like you combine, right? Or combine, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's like a voice one, voice two kind of thing. And like they just go well together. Unlike, you know, marimba plus Zylo, that's just like it's not like your Zylo's not a voice, it's a tink. It's Zylo, Zylo is tink tink tink, not voice, you know. And of course, like, you know, the versatility of the instrument. Just just the fact that it has a pedal, you know, like 
the pedal itself makes it like, yeah. It gives it like a face in the day. Okay, things you expect from the vibraphone parts. Okay, well what can a vibraphone do differently than the rest of the pick? It can do chords, like sustained chords, for way longer than anything else, without having any rolls. You can do the versatility thing, right? Marimbas should generally say faster than music. Like, you should play more 16th notes than you generally, right? Unless you're playing for the 7th note. They should play like, you know, like, uh, yeah. They should play more 16th notes, basically. Along with those lines. If 16th notes are the normal, then they're gonna play more 32nd notes, or 6th notes, or whatever. And like, this just should be about fun pe pedal stuff, you know, like. It's not gonna be that difficult, at least not our level yet, but I'm sure it gets more and more difficult. You might need good foot control and to practice foot control. Okay, so, cool things about the vibes. First off, go watch Table Talk. They show so much about like, what you can do with this instrument. It's just like, they, they clearly show how much you can do with this instrument. And like, if like, you want a TLDR of what I'm gonna talk about, just go watch that. Oh, but they don't use the motor. I'm gonna talk about that now. No, no, I'm gonna talk about pedaling first. Okay, so you can do three different basic things with pedaling. You can either have it not pedal at all, you can have it fully pedaled, or you can have it half pedaled. So like, you can adjust how much, how long the notes stay out. And like, that's what half pedaling is, like you can, Make it so that like the dampener is slightly touching the bar, it's just enough so that like, it starts to dampen it like faster than it normally would fade out, right? And it gives just how much it is. So like it can be like da versus like da versus like da. You know, like that. That's that's what half pedal is. It's controlling how long it stays out rather than just opening curves. You can mess up so much with like how long the note stays out and pedaling when and where that it just it's just so different than everything else. Glockenspiel and the chimes also have that vibe. I mean, you might use chimes in the marching band, I, I, we haven't yet. Also, it'd be kind of scary to wheel it out on the track, and just fall over immediately. But, um, and then the Glockenspiel, like an actual Glockenspiel. Bell set versus Glockenspiel. Bell set doesn't have a pedal. Glockenspiel has a pedal, basically. So, what we have here, that's not a Glockenspiel, that's a bell set. If you want to know when you should pedal or not pedal, just ask the fitness doctor. But generally, it's gonna be at the start of every number. It's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So you're gonna wanna do it like as close to four or as close to the next one as possible. So like one, one, two, three, four, one. Or depends on how good the dampener is. Our dampeners are terrible, but like Good dampeners, like you should be able to get one, two, three, four, one. Ours is probably like one, one, two, three, four, one. Yeah, generally it's gonna be like every measure should be pedal on its own. If it's different, your pit instructor or pit leader should probably tell you. And if you're, if you think it should be different, but like they haven't said anything, you can ask them. Just, just, just ask. Okay, yeah. So pedal is, of course, the most obvious and like, yes, yeah, the most obvious thing, right? Um, next one though, we only have one vibraphone that can do this, which is the motor. This is how the resonators is like a disc thing, right? And the disc, when the motor is on, it can spin. So it'll open, it'll open and close the resonators rapidly. Or not rapidly, but like consecutively. It's so like open and close, open and close. So our fragile and terrible indoor vibes have this, but our outdoor marching vibes, like the good vibraphone, does not have this. So this is what it sounds like. Versus non-motors. So the motor makes you go like wow, 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 wow. And so when the motor's off, it's just wow, 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 wow. Okay, if you're not using this and you're in marching band, you might want to make sure that the, the um, things aren't fat over the resonators. So you want to make sure that they're like this. Because if they're like this, it's like killing the sound. Not killing, but like now it's not going to make nearly as much sound. 
Yeah, I spent an hour today working on the, or an hour and a half, working on the motor. Cause like, this, the accident tools are totally fine. But the white keys, you might notice when the motor sucks. I currently faced like, three wads of paper in such a way that it will, um, actually help it spin. And then I also like, spaced out some stuff in the box. I'll, 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 like, I'll put a thing at the end of the video or wherever. I'll show what I did. Here, so that, like it moves the, or it keeps the, this thing, the resonator bar from moving this way. And I also put some paper in between each resonator bar. There's some paper and there's some paper. It's not that wide, it's not that much. It's like, for the, that one, it's like four layers, that one is like eight. And then that, helps this spin better. I also made sure that this is pushed all the way forward because like you can push it back a little bit, right? So I, I push it forward. Yeah, so that's what I did. So that maybe like during, if you have to use this during a concert, maybe you can rough kit. It might work, it might not work because you know, we're lifting it every day. We're jostling it around. It's a marching band, so it's gonna get beaten up, right? So things can change, but I'll show you what I did. So yeah, basically, Basically, the motor just makes the sound the sine wave or cosine wave, whatever. It doesn't start. It depends on like if it's open or not at the start. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it makes it a sine or a cosine. And only the bad vibes, the one that goes, no, that one does that. So this thing, right? This is the motor thing. You plug it in right here. This is. Uh, this is okay. This is hard. This is what you plug in. This is what you plug it in into. Plug in into that. Now you probably cord. It goes to here, and this is a separate thing. And this currently is attached to the portable charger, like the cubicle thing for phones. So uh, it plugs into like the main hub itself. I get Henny's permission for using it. Because, uh, that's what I did. And, uh, you don't want to, like, stop charging, like, 10 people's phones all at once. You know? And, like, they still have 0% and, like, what the heck. You know? So that, that's what this is. Um, and then... You put this into this pouch right here. It has a zipper on the bottom. And you put it into there. Try to wrap it up neatly. Okay, we just talked about the motor. Now we're gonna talk about the third major part. And there's like a fourth thing too, but like, I'm gonna talk about these three and try the fourth. I haven't like really done the fourth. I, I kind of, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So, you see this thing? Oh God. You see this thing? Percussionists use anything and everything, including this. Yeah, so uh, let me just do a demonstration. I'll show how a bow works and stuff. Not how it works, maybe I'll work. So, a bow uses friction on, okay, uses friction along the hairs to create like a rubbing thing, and that's, it's gonna rub something, okay. When it rubs something, it can make the object vibrate, and that can make a sound. Because sound is just like oscillations and sound waves, something like that. By hitting a um, bar, all we're doing is making it vibrate. This is doing the exact same thing, but by friction. And now, instead of having to do an impact on the bar to start it, we can just like ease into it. But then, yeah, you can kind of just like, ease yourself into it. That's what a bow can do. That's what a bow allows you to do. It allows you to create a sound without having to hit something. You can actually use a bow not only on vibes, but also on like a glockenspiel or the bells, which I mean, not our bells, because like they're in the case thing, but whatever. Um, you can also use it on the curtales, and you can use it on cymbals. And you can use it on other things, but those are like the instruments that make the best kind of sound, because they're resonance, right? Versus the marimba, where like it goes like da, the vibes can go like da. Yeah. So yeah, like bows work really well on this. So how you do it? 
is you want to start at the frog. No, no, not the frog. You're gonna want to press into the board, okay? I found that's good that if you like keep it parallel to like, or perpendicular to the bar, this is the bar, that's how you want to do it. Not like this, or this. I learned it like this by myself, but like, I feel like this works better. Because then you have a bigger surface area. So yeah, you're gonna want to push into the bolt, push into the bar, and then rise or go down. I found that rise either way works for like the white keys, but for our, our, our vibes here, you don't really want to raise up for these, because like, you're just gonna like push up the keys, and then they're gonna like go forward, because you have to push forward. Um, I don't know why this works for these keys. I mean, you can, but I can just move it. Um, so I, I would suggest going down. So don't forget to push into the thing, and don't like focus on like doing this fast. In fact, slow is actually better. Slow and with force is better than fast and no force, because like. That's not doing anything, but like, yeah. Okay, wait, I'm sorry. About the bow first. Normally, you're gonna want it loosen. It's still lefty loosey, lefty loosey, right side. It should feel loose, you know, like, you should easily be able to like, hit like the back of the bow. I'm no expert on this. This is just what I found in the past two weeks out of had experience with bows. Um, and then you're gonna want to tighten it for every time you use it. I swear to God, do not forget to loosen it. These are not ours. Unless you buy yourself a bow for like 50 plus dollars, some bows can be like $3,000 or something. So like, you sure as hell better not go damaging this, okay? Oh yeah, another thing about the bows, you wanna make sure that you have rosin on it. Rosin is like, it makes it have more friction. It's in like the red, um, red small like cylinder containers back there. Actually, there, isn't, there aren't any right now, but like, you know, just ask an orchestra kid, all the little luck. Just ask an orchestra kid for rosin, you could probably get some, you know. You can bow like anything, like I said, but like, those instruments work best. Um, yeah, like, the pedal should be down. Like, you shouldn't do it with the pedal not down, because like, it's just not gonna do anything. Yes, yeah, it's not gonna do anything. So the cool thing about this, right, if you take everything we've learned, right, you can use this, you can use the pedal, and you can use the motor. So now... You can do that. Also, you can dual wield bows. You have one, one in your right hand, one in your left hand. Or you can use like, um, mouse in one hand and then like bow in the other hand. Just watch table talk. They, they, they do everything. Like, yeah, they, the guy does like double bowing at some point. Like, or, 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 not that fast, but you know, like, yeah. And like the, um, the girl, woman, whatever, she does, um, one, she does one bow, not in the other hand. So yeah, you can also like adjust the motor speed, which I think I'd said when I was talking about motor. But like while using the bow or whatever, you can adjust the motor speed. And it's like, yeah, it, it, there's so much we can do. It's so cool. Yeah. So with those three in tandem, you can do so much. Um, and I'm willing to bet if you add the fourth thing, you can do even more. Um, the fourth thing is. So watch Table Talk. Table Talk does it so much better. They have two people doing it, so it makes it easier. You have a hard, like, fast matic, and then you press it into the board from the string area and move it to this other side. That changes, like, the sound of the bar. It makes it, it changes, like, the um, tone, intonation. More fat as you go into the center, and as you go away from the center, it makes it more sharp, back to what it should be. 
Um, real quick, the thing that you want to make sure of, you want to make sure that's retained. If it's birch, you aren't going to have that good result. So yeah, like if you have a hard retain that, if you do a birch, it's, not, it's just not going to work. Retain absorbs the shock, right? Um, versus birch is still like bounce. And it's just, like, it really bounces with retain. So like, it's going to bounce even more with birch. So, try to use retain. Because that's going to absorb a lot of the smaller vibrations that will like make the mat hit the board like many times over, you know? Yeah, just, just do it with your tan, okay? It has to be hard, fast, like mouth. Like, it's not a home now. Your tan's not a mouth. So yeah, that's everything. Um, I wish I was good enough or like had new pieces I can play that utilized all four of those, but uh, I don't, so sorry. <laughs> I just bow the first note of like Heartbroken Maya. <laughs> just bow Heartbroken Maya, oh my, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, I need to try this. <laughs> 